Hey, Boris. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Oh, okay. It's working. After oh, two yeah. sessions, uh, this is the first time that this thing has worked as expected in the first attempt. Um, but great. And you uh, can see the screen, right? Yes, I can. So uh, this is how we're going to go because I didn't get a chance to sync up with you. I couldn't find you on Slack. Uh, so uh, at, the at the beginning, I'm going to introduce you, and then uh, you can go ahead with your presentation. Uh, okay. Towards the end, uh, you can take a look at the chat to, to answer uh, questions uh, and also ask people to join you. Uh, and you know, if there's another channel you want to you continue answering questions and, for example, Slack, that's what other speakers have been doing. Uh, OK, OK. Okay. So I'll just um, let me just how it is. It's 11.15. Uh, let's just give everyone a minute or so before we start. We can start at eleven seventeen. Specific time.
Okay, let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the last session for uh, day one of the search track, this edition of Apache Con at Home 2020. Um, hope you've enjoyed the talk so far. Uh, for this session, we have with us Boris Kalitsky. Uh, he's been an active speaker at AI conferences for the last two decades and uh, contributed uh, to linguistics and machine learning technologies to multiple Silicon Valley startups uh, during this time. Uh, Boris is an Apache committer to the Open NLP project and publisher of various publications and uh, patents related to search. Uh, in this talk, he will be talking about the anatomy of an answer and how an open NLP and discourse analysis based indexing can be useful in improving relevance. Uh, over to you, Boris. Uh, good morning. Uh, so uh, this is the title uh, of the talk. And this is a very specific problem. How to, like, the idea is, default search engine we index everything whatever is available we index and then uh, uh we're going to take care of relevance by keywords by uh, location in a document by whatever by frequencies uh, this is a different approach if we take some efforts and actually understand try to understand in a domain independent way what this text is about maybe we don't need to index everything Maybe we only index important part, which I uh, directly ask, and we don't index the rest. So let's start uh, with a uh, uh, Google example. We search on Google, and we search for the issue of the main issue of this talk. How does discourse analysis help uh, to index important parts of text? And let's look at search result. And by, by the way, this is not a frequent search query. Uh, so Google most likely hasn't prepared for this. So we see some documents, mostly uh, research papers, which is reasonable. And then we see some occurrences, uh, highlighted keywords. The question is, okay, here are the keywords from the question. Here are the keywords from the possible answer. How do you know looking at this? And what we're going to explore, discourse analysis, actually uh, analyzes this text, processes this text, and tells us which occurrences are good. Like entity for in critical discourse analysis, entity is good. Critical, not necessarily. If you have uh, entity occurrence, is good. But if it's just distributed as keywords through text, is it good enough? And the answer is no. Uh, these keywords need to be somehow correlated, logically connected. If they're not logically connected, even if they're next to each other, it's not good enough. So default indexing, we just take care of distance between words, like uh, some limitation between all these highlighted uh, keywords. They should be uh, less than three to five keywords, for example. But that is not good enough. That's like... Uh, considering text as a long string token, string of tokens, and it's not. It's uh, specially logically organized. So we are going to see how to take care of logical organization and then index properly. Uh, the start, we're going to start with uh, OpenLP and then OpenLP similarity, uh, the component I'm working over the last nine years. And this is mostly a uh, wrapper about uh, different linguistic technologies and applications for this part of OpenLP. Uh, uh, search engines, chatbot recommendations, text analysis, uh, security, uh, generation, writing, and uh, general uh, text learner. So the main objective of this component is to wrap uh, linguistic parts, syntactic analysis, any recognition, uh, so, uh, for for integration, you don't need to know anything. Don't need to know much about linguistic. You just uh, call high-level functions like do similarity assessment, uh, compare a question and answer. It's a high-level set of functions, so you don't have to go into inter linguistic internals, uh, syntactic, semantic, discourse internals. You just call high-level functions and do. Uh, similarity assessment and all kinds of rele relevance assessment. And again, this is from search 
to uh, dialogues, discourse analysis is very important for dialogue management, for example, and other applications. And here's the main thing. What is happening inside the main thing in science similarity components? The idea is if you have uh, one to compute similarity, similarity between question and answer, just keywords and their frequencies are not good enough. You need to know how they are syntactically organized. So we have a question, uh, for example, two questions. We want to uh, compute similarity between two questions. We build a parse tree with information about which word, what part of speech, what type of syntactic connection, and then uh, the size and the parameters of common, maximal common subtree tells us how actually similar uh, these two uh, questions are to each other, Qu question to question or question to answer. And one application area, recent development, is a chatbot which based on uh, domain independent use of Bing API to go to the web and then all kind of similarity uh, to generate content on the fly, uh, to maintain dialogue management and have other nice uh, chatbot features. And again, it's a, a toolkit, linguistic toolkit, so you don't have to do much in linguistic uh, to have a reasonable uh, chatbot enable with uh, machine learning and linguistic features. And this is just a uh, uh, jump into detail. There's a lot of uh, linguistic uh, parameters combined inside. It's not only open NLP, it's Stanford NLP, all kind of additional features, discourse parser, uh, some additions to open NLP, some linguistic resources. So basically everything, well, a lot of stuff you need to uh, combined, so you don't have to worry, they already combined under uh, this toolkit, including uh, tree kernel learning, uh, nearest neighbor learning. So you, again, you have these high level functions and all these resources are already in the system. Okay, uh, now let's uh, proceed to the main uh, topic of this presentation. What is the anatomy of answer? Like, what do we need to understand? What do we need to know about answer to index it properly? Question answer pairs can uh, have content, not central topic of an answer. If it's not central, we don't want to index it because there should be other answer where it is central. And then we break the relevancy because if keywords from uh, from query occurs in the answer, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is a good answer. And this is the main thing. Indexing irrelevant text allows the precision. So instead of uh, uh, getting one good, exact, direct answer, we get all answers uh, with the keyword, uh, with the keywords from query. And we know, I mean, we encounter this all the day, all the time. Default search engine default. Uh, TFID if search engine have this problem and even uh, more sophisticated. It's a hard uh, to solve this problem without discourse analysis, as we understand, because we either need to understand domain, then with the ontology, very domain dependent and very hard to adjust. And only uh, relying on keyword statistic, we cannot do it because importance of a phrase, it's about logic organization of text. It's not about frequency of keywords. So frequency of keywords doesn't help at all here. Uh, so we propose a discourse-based approach and we determine informative parts. And informative in terms of logical organization of text, not in terms of we take entity or we just take a phrase and uh, assess importance standalone. It's logic how uh, when, uh, when authors organize text, they, as we're going to see, they organize it in a way that important comes in one chunk and less important comes as additions. And discourse analysis helps to recognize. And then we only, again, the main uh, rule for this approach, we only index important, what we, what we recognize as important. We do not index unimportant. Uh, so rhetorical structure theory. So we take text, we split it into uh, parts. Important parts is nucleus, uh, relative uh, dependent parts called satellite, called elementary, and what we split uh, text into called elementary discourse unit, discourse unit. 
and it's about a uh, logical organization of text. For example, in this presentation, uh, my topic is discourse analysis. I first define what it is, then I define another entity, then I define second entity, and in uh, fourth sentence, I or I define the link between it. It doesn't matter the topic of my talk. Doesn't matter the logical organization matters, and logical organization of text, a logical organization of answer tells us how to index it. Now, discourse tree, it's a main uh, way to represent discourse. Discourse parsers take text and produce discourse trees. It's a hierarchy of rhetorical relations. It's directed mostly anti-symmetric. And we're going to, uh, the rest of the talk, we're going to consider different examples of uh, rhetorical relations. So I like this example uh, from Theranus story because it's very controversial. So a lot of interesting text features like argumentation, controversy, and stuff. Relation uh, that hold between parts. Once we have relation, now this uh, text is taken, uh, text is taken, split into parts. And then the parts are organized in a tree. And then between each leaves terminal nodes, this is a uh, relation. The default relation is elaboration. It means something and then something additional. Something and something additional. And the elaboration is not uh, symmetric. So something is always more important than something additional. Joint is symmetric. It means just two observation comes together. Uh, background means here is the fact, here is background for this fact. So rhetoric relations explain why text is coherent. If you just uh, take keywords and apply syntactic analysis and try to build text from it, by the way, uh, this is how uh, deep learning tries to generate text, just learn uh, sequence of words. And we know it doesn't work well uh, because we need to learn not just syntactic relations, but also discourse relation. You need to organize logic. So if you learn from text, from syntactic relations, and gen generate new text based only on syntax, uh, distance uh, two, three, four, probably are doing well. But then uh, the logical structure is broke. That is why it's so hard to automatically generate text. You need to know not just syntax and semantics, but also discourse. Okay, uh, so this is an, another example of a discourse tree, another uh, paragraph. So usually a typical discourse tree is a for paragraph of text, couple of sentences, maybe three, five sentences. But uh, uh, theoretically can be uh, built for longer text and just uh, gold, uh, levels of hierarchy going to be much uh, deeper. What we are adding here, in addition to rhetorical relations, how text is organized. Again, attribution here means that this part, not just randomly, but uh, we observe this because according to, like according to employees, according to four former employees. So relation between the rest of text and this phrase, according to four former employees, is attribution. Because this is the fact, and this is uh, how we obtain, from which source we obtain this fact. So that's why attribution is specific relation. And at the highest point, uh, there is explanation. And uh, there are discourse, some indicators, syntactic indicators, this text, why it is, is explanation, uh, because there should be uh, some fact here, and then explaining another observation here. What we have in addition here, communicative actions. Uh, there is a different word, a uh, different world. We have rhetorical structure theory, and now communicative actions are speech act theory. Like the same fact can be agreed, disagreed, informed, disinformed, disputed, and so forth. So, uh, now we have the same tree, nodes, uh, no, terminal nodes, uh, pieces, pa uh, portions of text, elementary discourse units, other labels for nodes are 
rhetorical relations. And then for arcs, we have, for some arcs, we have uh, communicative actions. Something not just ex have excitement about technology, but somebody struggled with it. Uh, somebody not just do, did with only friction, but developed it. Uh, so develop and uh, struggle here is generalization of uh, how information is carried out or how something is developed, how some entity uh, evolves. Uh, now simple, another simple example of discourse tree, and now we are approaching importance. So here is the review text, how we index reviews, for example. This camera shoots well in low light, so I made a few good shots. So the simple indexing rule here, this is a fact, or this is a claim of manufacturer, or opinion, main opinion of the user. So this is important. And nobody cares what I did. So I made a few good shots on a boat at night. Like, who cares? Was it on a boat or on a plane? Was it at night? Night might be important, uh, but it's already uh, covered with low light. Uh, so uh, the observation here, we want to index this part. And we don't want to index keywords like boat or night because they can trigger very different. They can uh, trigger this answer to answer totally different question. And we don't want that. And again, this is two units. This camera shoots well in low light. So unit one is important. Unit two is not less important. So we only index, if we have important and unimportant, nucleus and satellite, we index nucleus and we don't index satellite. And now the questions. So these are, for this question, this is a good answer. Camera shoots low light, shoots low light, low light, low light. Every, low light is a focus of this text. It's not a board, night board, board at night, good shots. These are very common, very broad questions. We don't want these questions to trigger this answer because this is answer very specific about light. That is why, again, we do not index this uh, lower part. We only index upper part. Uh, we index the main thing, but not uh, uh, the consequence, not uh, what was explained. And now, in terms of search engineering, imagine pairs, question answer pairs. Question answer pairs, we index them. And then, what do we do in a real life search? So, we have a query. And if we can match it, if this query correspond available question, that is good enough. We don't need this technology. We just find a similar question and we do it on syntactic analysis. If it's not working, if it's no to few results, then this is a focus of what we are doing. Then we uh, have our specific index, uh, not completely, not full index of all answers, but only important parts. And then we search against it. It still fails. Then we, have not, then we have nothing to do, then do the default search. So the third option, our resort is, what we resort to is uh, the default search. So we, if we cannot find, like it means the content doesn't cover the topic evenly. So for some questions, we don't have anything in terms of important part of answer. Then we just cover it by default search uh, by the full index so we don't we still need so if we index uh documents according to this technology we still have uh, the traditional complete index of full answers uh for the third option but in addition we build additional index we try first which only uh indexes uh does indexing for important parts and that, in, uh, as, we, as we will see, and as probably you felt by now, improves precision. Uh, another more complicated example of a discourse tree. Uh, so right now we show, uh, this is more complicated discourse tree. This is a question about uh, tax. And this is an example of some financial uh, site. And uh, the number of answers is limited. We don't want, again, to index all keywords. We only index important parts. So we build the discourse tree. 
it starts with elaboration, elaboration, enablement, but by means which way we do it, uh, then what are the conditions, if something, if you are under then. So it's a condition. And then for each of uh, this relation, we highlight uh, important part, nucleus part, and we ignore the satellite part. So everything highlighted, everything underscored, we index. Everything not underscored, we don't index. And let's look at examples. So these are the phrases uh, from important parts, which are the basis for questions this answer should answer. Maximize retirement saving, proceed from conversion, uh, saving held on retirement accounts, account funds, funds for retirement account. And these are phrases from the same text, which defaults or changing would answer with this answer, but it shouldn't. Generally good idea. We don't want, this text is about very specific retirement saving. We don't want to index very general words. One way to figure that out, probably generally good an idea, going to be very frequent, but not necessarily. So by frequency, you cannot filter this out. You can uh, get to this part only by frequency. Resultant tax uh, cost. These expressions are detached from context. So it's not a good idea to match question with these parts because the answer mentions this, but this is not the topic of this answer. So this is uh, one of the most, again, uh, coming uh, to my introductory example, that is a key reason for complicated questions, uh, like in this example, if you search on the using web search engine, it's hard to get exact answer because some documents, these parts are indexed, but it shouldn't have. And that is why this answer mentions like a resulting tax cost. But if you read this answer and learn it, it doesn't really help you. Okay, so this is a key. This is very important. The same answer, we just uh, discourse three, we visualize differently. Now, everything highlighted in green should be indexed. Everything which is not in green is not indexed. And this is just different way uh, to visualize uh, to visualize this discord. Uh, now, um, how we do uh, if you use this rule, 